Hi, Mike Kent again with the last of my decision statement examples. In this example, I want to fire up error checking. Let me drill down until I find the Microsoft video solution, Visual Studio solution file, launch the project. I've already downloaded this from Blackboard and unzipped it. And in this example right here, I've got a program that's going to do some error checking. It's going to make sure the user enters the name, make sure they enter a number for credit hours, and then they have to pick one of these four radio buttons. Now, this is this example is actually from a book called uh, Programming in Visual Basic 2010 by Bradley and Millsball. It's actually on page 180, and they do the error checking as I show you in this button right here, Ugly Code. And I show you an alternative way to do it that I think is much easier to understand and much easier to maintain under nice code. So let me run the program. I'll hit start here, show you what the program's doing. So if I don't enter a name, it says please enter a name. So then we'll put in one of my favorite names. This time let's put in Fred. So now it's going to get past Fred, but it's going to complain about enter a number for units and you see it put the focus in here so we'll put in 42 then I'll say ugly code again and it says please enter a grade level so this time I'll pick junior ugly code worked no errors were detected and nice code does the same thing It'll, it, it will catch all three of those errors so what I want to do now is open up the ugly code button so we can look at this and see how it is working so it's going to first this first if, if statement is going to check to see if the text box is empty. If name text box dot text is not equal to quote quote, if that's true, then we're going to start our second error check, which is a try catch to see if units text box is a number by doing a decimal parse and putting it into units decimal. And if that try works, then it's going to go on to this if statement where it's going to check to see is freshman radio button dot checked true or is sophomore radio button dot checked true or junior radio button checked true or senior radio button checked true. If any one of those four is true, then the then condition will be true and this is where we'd have all our wonderful code to do whatever this program is going to do but all this program is doing is doing the error checking now if this error statement is false it's going to jump to the else right here and say hey pick a grade level if this try fails it's going to jump to this catch and say hey please enter a number for units and then it's going to put the focus in the units tech box text box. And then finally way down here we have the else that goes with the if for the name text box. If that's false we say please enter a name. So let me put a breakpoint right here and run the program and I'm not going to enter anything in. I'm going to hit ugly code. So now we're at the first line of ugly code here and remember from the debug menu I can single step a line of code by pressing F10. So let me step through the code one line at a time here we go. Do we have something in the name text box? No. It jumps to the else, which is going to pop up the message box. Please enter a name. Okay. It's going to put the focus in the text box. And then it's going to hit in sub, and we're back to running the program. So let's put one of my favorite names in here. This time I'll put Fred and hit ugly code. So now we're coming back in to my sub. I can single step through it. Has it got a name? Yes, it does. Now it's going to try to do the try. Now the try is going to try to turn what's in the text box into a decimal, but there's nothing in the text box, so that's going to fail. That's going to trigger the catch. So it jumps down to the catch. It's going to do a message box saying, hey, please enter a number for number of units. It's going to keep running. At this point, I'm going to say continue just to keep it running. This time, let's put in 42, and I'll say ugly code again. Hit our breakpoint, so I'm going to hit F11. It has a name. It's going to try to convert it to a decimal. That worked. Now it's going to do this if statement. Oops, no radio button is picked. So it's going to do this message box. Please select a grade level, and then I can tell my program to keep running. So finally, 
let's pick a grade level junior I'll say ugly code and we can see that it has a name it's able to do the decimal dot parse successfully one of the four radio buttons is picked so it would have jumped right here had I had any code but I just had that empty it's gonna hit end if and try and if for the outer if statement and sub and that's what happens with the ugly code now let's turn off that breakpoint by clicking in the gray margin again and let's look at the nice code so here's my nice button nice button click so once again I think this is cleaner because you're handling one error at a time instead of all three errors being intertwined together and we can get away with that because on each error we say exit sub which remember exit sub makes it jump all the way down to the end of the sub and exit the subroutine without running any of the code in between so the first thing we do is we check to see if name text box dot text is quote quote if it is what are we gonna do message box we're going to put the focus back in the text box and we're going to say exit sub. Now, I have completely handled that problem. Let's go on to getting the number. So I'm going to do a try catch. The exact same code I had before to do the try catch, I'm going to get what's in the text, the unit's text box, decimal.parse it. If that fails, it's going to get caught. And the only difference I'm doing is right here I'm saying exit sub. Don't try to do anything else. Okay. Now I added a little bit of extra error checking. Right here I said if desk credit hours is less than zero invalid number of hours exit sub. So this try catch says is it a number? This if statement says is it a number I like? It's got to be greater than zero. Then finally since we have radio buttons I'm going to use a nested if statement to check for freshman checked and this is where I'd write my code for freshman else if sophomore checked and my code for sophomore, else if junior, else if senior, and then finally I catch the error. If no radio buttons picked, I'll say message box show. Please select a grade level. And since there's no other code down here, I don't need an exit sub. Now, if I had a bunch of code here, then I'd want to say exit sub right here, right after this. I'd want to say exit sub so it would skip all my code that was doing the wondrous things this program does but all this program does is error checking so it has a user interface but it doesn't actually do anything with the data it collects this in my mind this is much cleaner I changed my code here so I need to recompile my program because I added an extra line exit sub it says rebuild all succeeded now I'm gonna I've got my breakpoint let's get my breakpoint right there so I can pause the code at that place. I'm going to say start the program. And if I just hit nice code right here, remember I can hit F10. It's going to say message box, please enter a name, focus, exit sub. It jumps all the way to the end sub. Now I, now I can put in a name. We'll put in Fred. Let's say nice code. Get down to my error checking. It's got a name. It skips over that. It tries to do the try catch. That triggers an error because there's no number in there. So we get message box. Please enter a number of credit hours. Focus. Exit sub. It skips the rest of the program. Keeps running. Now I'll pick junior. We'll say nice code. Keep hitting F11. It's got a name. That worked. The try catch works because I now have a number. You can see I have uh, zero? Nope, I didn't put a number in. Let's try this again. I'm going to put in 45 for credit hours. Say nice code. We got a name. We've got the credit hours successfully. Now we have a 45. Now it's going to say, is it greater than zero? Yes, it is. And then it's going to start checking to see which radio button is true. The junior one is true. So then it's going to, it would have run the junior code had I had any junior code, goes to the end F, and then we would have run any code to actually do what the program was doing. So that's what this program does. I think this error checking is cleaner because you're handling one error at a time, checking on name, 
handle that completely. Checking on the number, handle that completely. Check on the range of the number, that's done. Now I can check the radio buttons, that's done. So if I get through all this, then I can do my actual work, but this program doesn't do any actual work, it's just an example of error checking. That's all I got.